Hi, welcome back to Strategic Management. I'm Melissa Schilling, and in this video, we're going to talk about value chain analysis using the BRIO framework. And special thanks to Professor Russ Koch for contributing material for this video. Markets are structured in value chains. For example, a steel mill, a tire manufacturer, and labor are all inputs to an auto manufacturer, who in turn sells to dealerships, who in turn sells to consumers. At each stage in the value chain, someone's creating value, hopefully. There's a value chain inside the firm, too. For example, a firm's primary activities might start with product design, followed by procurement of supplies, which enables manufacturing, which leads to marketing and sales. And all of these might be supported by secondary activities, like human resources or information technology, finance, accounting and legal, and research. Our first step then in our value chain analysis is to identify our value chain activities. Not all firm value chains will look the same. For example, in a pharmaceutical firm, the primary activities might start with R&D, followed by clinical trials, and the secondary activities might include things like licensing and alliances. Okay, so once you've identified your value chain activities, it's time for step two, to identify the strengths and weaknesses in the value chain activities. For example, let's start with our value chain activity of R&D. We might decide that our strengths include our exceptional scientists, our patented technology, our strong stage gate process, and our exclusive relationship with our R&D partner. On the other hand, we might think we have a weakness in that we have a smaller R&D budget than our competitors. Now it's time to move on to step three, where we analyze whether any of our strengths are sustainable competitive advantages using the BRIO framework. V stands for valuable, as in, does it create value for the firm, either by decreasing costs or increasing customer willingness to pay? R stands for rare, as in, do few or no other competitors have the capability or resource? I stands for inimitable, that is, is it difficult for others to imitate or substitute the resource? Something only stays rare if it's difficult to imitate. O stands for organizational support. That is, is the right organization, infrastructure, assets, and culture in place to leverage the capability or resource? For example, suppose you're a company that designs Formula One racing cars and your engineers come up with a way to make more aerodynamic bicycles, but you don't have manufacturing or distribution facilities in bicycles and you don't really see yourself as a bicycle company. You could have an amazing advantage in this technology yet struggle to deploy it. Okay, so now we're going to apply our VRIO analysis to our R&D strengths, starting with our exceptional scientists. We might decide, yes, they're valuable, they are rare, they are difficult to imitate, and we have good organizational support to leverage them. So we decide our exceptional scientists are a sustainable competitive advantage. Now we'll look at our patented technology. We might decide that the kind of patented technology we have is valuable and rare, but it's not actually difficult to imitate, and there's only modest organizational support for leveraging it. Therefore, it's a potential advantage, but not a sustainable competitive advantage at this point. Now let's look at our strong stage gate process. It's definitely valuable, and we have good organizational support for it. On the other hand, it's not rare. It's very popular among other firms, and it's easy to imitate. Therefore, it only offers us competitive parity. Now let's look at our exclusive relationship with our R&D partner. We might conclude that it's valuable and rare and that we have good organizational support to leverage it. On the other hand, if we think there are similar firms our competitors could partner with, we might be worried that it could be imitated. Therefore, it only offers us a temporary advantage. Now we're ready for step four, where we assess the strategic implications of our analysis. Now, using the results of our analysis, we will ask, how can we obtain the resources and capabilities we need to overcome our weaknesses? How can we best extend and defend our temporary advantages? And how can we best exploit and reinforce our sustainable competitive advantages? Our sustainable competitive advantages should be the foundation of our strategy. A rigorous understanding of our advantages and disadvantages is key to formulating a winning strategy. 